Now, he's a part of the Amperis Reggie Wayne celebrity basketball game tomorrow night. Of course, a part of the Indiana Black Expo going on right now. That's tomorrow night at the convention center at 6. Number 87, former Colts great and the awesome Reggie Wayne joins us. Hello, Reg. How are you? What's, what's going on? I'm in the building. Talk it, to me. It has been way, way damn too long. We're glad you're back. <laughs> It's always glad. I'm always glad to be back, man. You know, uh, everybody knows that Indianapolis is like my second home. So whenever I get off the the plane and walk through the terminal and, and it says "Welcome to Indianapolis," it always brings a smile on my face. Well, Amp and I were talking about you a couple of days ago, and I, I love it because you're still so incredibly involved with the community. I mean, just like you lived here full time, and yeah. you give up all this time to come back here and do this, man. Tip of the cap to you, because that's a job well done. You know, I appreciate it. But you know what? Uh, back in 2001, when I first stepped foot into the state of Indiana and walked in, uh, you know, in, in, into Indianapolis, everybody, it treated me like I was family. I knew Nothing about the Midwest. I know I've said this story numerous times, but it's the truth. I, I knew nothing about the Midwest. Didn't know anybody, you know, from the Midwest. So I came in like, like I was blindfolded. I had no clue. And um, when I got here from day one, everybody took me in. They accepted me like I was a Hoosier. And, uh, you know, I can't hug everybody, obviously. You know, but one thing I can do is give back to, to the community and uh, just try to stay active as much as possible. Well, and then part of that's coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, Reggie Wayne joins us. So um, we're getting ready to start camp. We're going to be up in Westfield with this team, watching them. What's your expectation for this Colts team in 2019, Reg? Well, my expectation, they should be pretty good. They really should be pretty good. Now, you know, the, the schedule is pretty tough, and, and that's what happens when you have a season like they had. Uh, you're going to start playing better opponents. Um, but it 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 it, it give them a good test. It, they should be battle tested when it comes down to playoff time. And I expect this team to win the division. I expect them to go in the playoffs. I expect them to do some special things this year. I think the players. It's a young team. I think they love the gossip that you know head coach Frank Wright has given them. Um, one thing about this team is they're so young. They're so young. They don't they don't know they don't know what they're doing. They're just going out there and playing football. They don't care about the mystique of you know, of anything in, from the past. They just know that right now they're going out there to play a game and they just want to go out there and have fun. And I enjoy watching them going out there and being successful. Has the, their kind of have rise to the point where they are right now, has that impressed you, and especially with the decision-making that Chris Ballard has, has done in the front office? Well, I'll tell you what. i I tell you it was surprising. You know, it's, it's, it's not every day where you see, you know, a first-time head coach um, and Frank Wright come into a situation where, he can grasp a team so fast uh, and, and and get everybody on the same page so fast. That's was that's was exciting because it to be good in, in, in the NFL, it takes time for a team to gel. It takes time for for those players to really understand what the coaches are wanting them to do. You know, so uh, to see it happen so fast and so rapid, you know, it's pretty special. So, uh, you know, now you got everybody with another year in that system. Uh, knowing exactly what to do and how to do it, man, the sky's the limit for him. So Reggie Wayne, he's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. I kind of compared, and you and I had the conversation back before the Ring of Honor ceremony uh, in November of a year ago, right here, about my comparison, Frank Reich, to Tony Dungy from just a, an anti-chaotic type of dude on the sideline. I mean, you look over to him, and it's all calm, cool, and collected no matter what's going on. Then you went into the Devin Hester Super Bowl story, which was awesome. But <laughs> but, but um, now that's kind of how I, I kind of compare them both personality-wise in that capacity because they always seem to have kind of a, a calming influence on everything going on around them. And, and you know what? You know, last uh, last training camp I had the, the, the luxury of, you know, uh, being out there, helping them practice, um, coaching them up a little bit, and I, I experienced a few games. So during those games, I got the headphones on, and now I see how it's going on the other side. I've never been on that side before, so I can hear what the coaches are saying. I can hear everything. And it was it was like he was so calm, Coach Wright. He was so calm that I thought something was wrong. I, I didn't know if I should go over there and shake him or what, but he was so 
just even kill, just steady. And I think that's that's the way this, the players are. I think they go out there, they're, they're never really rattled. They just even kill, and they just going out there and do their job. I, I mean, as a player, you you, you gotta you gotta respect that. Um, I had the luxury of having Coach Ryan as a receiver coach for me for a year uh, here in Indianapolis, and uh, you know he was he was cool then. You know he was a guy he was a guy I wanted for the job, but then when he got the job, I was like, you know, I wonder. It'd be interesting to see how he'll be a head coach, you know. And being there with him in a, in a training camp last year, I was like, you know what? He's pretty darn good. He knows what he's doing, and it's awesome because he was a quarterback in the league. You got Andrew Luck. He's, you know, or what a better way to get a former quarterback to be your head coach and show you the way. I did you think when he when he coached you up uh, positionally? Did you think that ultimately he would turn into a head coach in the NFL at that time? You know, I didn't see it. I really didn't see it, and and and, and I pro- I get it. You know, all those coaches probably dream to be a head coach someday. You know, but I just didn't see it. But it, sitting back and thinking about it, you know, he was just, you know, he was just a, a student of the game. He really was, and he, he watched from afar, and then he got his opportunity and he shined. And sitting up there at training camp, watching it, I'm like, you know what? I get it. You, you don't have to be a rah rah guy to be a to get a big position in the league. You know, you can be a, a Tony Dungy type guy, and it works. And I think he treats everybody like men. They get it. They understand it. And, uh, I mean, they go out there and play hard for him. You know, part of this, I think this might hold true in a lot of professions, but in, in his case, it kind of feels like he saw the other side of it without football and now gets it even more because that experience, because you did see the other side of it. Well, yeah. And, and one thing about players, Players respect just a little bit more. They respect that coach just a little bit more when they play. Yeah. If, if, if you get a coach that, that that actually put that helmet on and, and and ran between those lines, and when they become coaches as a player, you respect them a little bit more because we we know you did it. Not saying that the coaches that didn't play aren't good. I'm just saying that they respect them a little bit more because we know that you played it. You understand what I'm going through when I tell you. This was hard to do. You understand it. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot different when you got that helmet on compared to standing at the chalkboard drawing on that board. You know what yeah. I mean? So so uh, I think a lot of guys look at Coach Wright that way. And, and, and you know, by him explaining certain things, they'd be like, okay, I'll do it that way because I know you witnessed it. You've been in it. And uh, – you expect us to do it the same way. He is Reggie Wayne. He joins us on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Um, you had, by far, one of the great lines in the history of the draft in Nashville this past spring. <laughs> that was a job well done. How much How much did you hear positive compared to, I'm sure, a lot of the negative that you heard from Titans fans because you kind of stuck it to them with the booze? Well, well, well first of all, you know, I just went out there to... to, to <laughs> To make the pick, right? Yeah, I, that's all I wanted to do, and uh, and you know I get it. We in Nashville, and they booed, they booed, but I was it just it caught me by surprise, and it, and it's funny, you know, you know me being with the NFL Network now, I got all these numbers and stats and all that stuff in my head, you know, so it came right to me, and like, wait, that's Tennessee people, and they're booing. You, you shouldn't boo, you know what I mean? So it just came right to me, and and I got some, I got some negative feedback. Which, if you know me, I really don't care. Um, <laughs> um, um, but it was funny. The funny part about it was all of the Tennessee people who said, "You know what? You're right. <laughs> we shouldn't boo. We should start winning before we can boo." So it, that was the one that was more satisfying. Just the Tennessee type fans <laughs> that actually agreed. You know what I mean? Even the guy who booed, <laughs> is this the funny part? When I came back out there the second time, see, they didn't know I was coming out there three times. They thought, <laughs> right? The guy that booed, when I came out there the second time, we made eye contact, and I'm like, you good? He was like, he, he was like, no, nah, I'm out. I'm done. I, I'm, you win. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it was, it was funny. And it, and it was all, it was all fun. You know, uh, you know, Tennessee was a, was a, was a, was a, a it, we always had battles. Uh, with Tennessee, uh, it was a fun place to play. Actually, Tennessee, it kind of surprised me for for the draft. I got to see the city a little bit, 
And uh, it was some nice people there, man. It really was. But you shouldn't boo me. Yeah, that, I don't I, boo, yeah. I, don't boo you. I, I can. I agree. But man, you had you um <laughs> you knocked it out of the park with the retort right there too. I mean, I know you didn't have that loaded either, but no, I mean, it was inst- it was instantaneous. That was beautiful. Man, you know what? I kind of surprised myself a little bit. I was quick on my feet, man. I really was because I could have started stuttering or something like that. But I was quick on my feet. I think that's what made it so what made it so good that it, that it you know, I, I was able to, to to retaliate, you know, quickly. You know what I mean? But uh, like I said, it was all fun and games. It was a sight. And I, I can assure you, I, I tell you this, and I, and I beg the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Please don't lose against Tennessee because I promise you they will come after me. <laughs> and if we lose to the Tennessee Titans, I know my my Instagram and my Twitter account will be blowing up. I already know. I, listen, I know that he's not on social media, but the reason why I give you props for having that thing loaded and ready to go instantaneously because we know this. It had taken 18, like 15 minutes to think that one out. You know, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he did. So wait, wait a minute. Now, how is this going to affect? What if I say this, and then what happens oh, yeah. in the future? Yeah, now, no, I know it's Tennessee, exactly. and it wouldn't be the same thing because he's in Tennessee. But yeah, you kind of catch my my drift on that. So. I get it. Yeah, all all the sides. Reggie Wayne's with us. Ampere's Reggie Wayne celebrity basketball game is coming up tomorrow night. It is in Hall F at the Convention Center. At Six o'clock. It is free. Um, I've been a part of this for a while. You've been a part of this for the while. It really is special, isn't it? It is. It is, man. It, it, it's a great time, and as you mentioned, it's free. Uh, so you know, everybody should come out and have a good time. One thing about this, this is an opportunity for everybody to put whatever wolves, whatever problems they have to the side just for a couple hours. You know, you can come out, enjoy the festivities. It's a fun weekend. The basketball game is exciting. We have a great time. And the the one thing that I love about it is just being able to see people smile. I want people to come out and smile and have a good time. That's why I do this every single year. Yeah, and uh, you you get out there, uh, you coach it up, you play a little bit. I think T.Y. is yeah. going to be a part of it. you got numerous Colts players. Jacoby Brissett acts like it's Game 7 of the NBA Finals. It's all good. <laughs> hey man, you know what? Everybody enjoy it coming out and, and, and playing. You know, so you know, I, as the years go on, I do less. I do less, and uh, <laughs> I, I really I, – <laughs> I really get a, a, a kick out of just seeing how Amp Harris's team always finds a way yeah. to come back from twenty in twenty seconds. You know, I don't. Every year I look at the scoreboard like, oh, perfect. We because are, that score's not right. Points. You know, yeah. you, you ever play pickup basketball with somebody that never can get the score right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, he finds a way to creep back into the game. Without actually making buckets, I don't know how that's possible. I don't get it. He's like, are you everybody playing with somebody that never got the score right? You know what I mean? And that's that's kind of that's that is perfect right there too. But hey, honestly, thanks for doing what you do during this. It's really special. Uh, absolutely love having you on. Now, how often are you going to be back, or might be back over the course of the season? What's your plan? Um, I, you know, I hadn't mapped it out yet, but I I tend. I, I, I want to attend a couple games, two or three games, uh, home games. Um, it all depends, man. It's, it's you know I got these boys at the house now. They keep me, you know, they keep the Wayne gang going, you know. So <laughs> they uh, if they don't have anything going on as far as sports wise, then you can see me pretty often. Well, I'm coming off like. Jim Irsay, and I'm saying they're, they're they're going to the AFC title game. So I'm already I'm raised that bar pretty high on this squad this year. Well, you know what? Sounds like they Jim. Should. They, 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 they should they should have a high bar because they're they're a pretty good team. They're young. They're they're exciting to watch. Everybody's pretty healthy. You know, starting with the quarterback with Andrew Luck. You know, uh, you know, T. Y. has had the time to heal all his. Hey, listen, this team is they're gonna they should be pretty good. I don't want to jinx them to say that they're gonna be so good you know but they should be pretty good i think uh i think you know the 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 league needs to give them more props than they actually give them that's uh reggie wayne right there catch him on the nfl network but you can catch him coming up tomorrow night you're already in town is what you said right now i'm already in town i am here i'm, I'm loving the heat you know <laughs> I, I like i like the hot weather uh yep. uh but it but you know what it's just this is this is one time where i come down I'm in, I'm just excited, man. I'm excited to be here. Every time I'm here, I'm 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 happy. Uh, 
And, and, and it, it always seems like it's a fun time, you know, and I, and I enjoy it. I really do. Well, the people around here do a great job, and uh, one in particular, Amp, does just a tremendous job, not just, you know, today or tomorrow or during the game, but you know, basically the entire, you know, four or five day period of Indiana Black Expo. And I think he's going with Teddy Riley and guys playing up here for free, just a little north of downtown, coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Yeah. So that should be fun just as well. a little bit. He, he, hey, that's Amp, man. He's always busy, you know, uh, I know he's busy whenever I call him and he keeps sending me the voicemail. I know that he's busy. Cause he's, I, he's... I assume our friendship's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I just wait for him to call me, you know, at this time, but he does a, he does a great job, man. He's a, he's another guy who, who is so selfless in, in, in his time. Yeah. Cause uh, he, he wants to do so much for the community and give back and, Man, I'm just grateful to have him as a friend. Well, when a he brother. when he sends you straight to voicemail, you know that he's coming up with another major power move. You know that. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Another one. Another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> All right, hey, I'll see you tomorrow night, six o'clock for the Empire's Reggie Wayne Celebrity Game. Uh, it's down at the Convention Center in Hall F. It's absolutely free, and uh, come on down, Reg. Reg, thanks for everything, man. We love having you on here in Indy, and uh, thanks for the time today. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Jay, appreciate you.